Welcome to another SnapLogic video. Let's take a quick look at how to view and troubleshoot pipeline executions in SnapLogic Monitor. SnapLogic Monitor gives you both real-time and historic views of pipeline execution. You can quickly identify failing or poorly performing pipelines and investigate the root cause. Let's take an in-depth look at how to use the controls on the pipeline executions page to track pipeline executions and analyze pipeline health. The default view of pipeline executions lists not running pipelines that completed or failed in the last hour. The most recent execution shows at the top of the table. These buttons provide one-click filters. Even without a filter, we can immediately spot the failed executions highlighted in red. You can also set filters on individual columns. To focus on failures, we'll filter on the status. We'll select completed with errors and failed. The errors preset filter activates because it filters for the same statuses. In the table, we note that the same scheduled pipeline is failing frequently. We'll see how to drill into the execution details a bit later. For now, let's unset the filter by clearing the select all box. Let's scroll to view the information available in the columns to the right. The duration and number of documents processed are general performance indicators. We can click the arrow to sort by the values. Not all available columns are visible by default. To add or remove columns, click the table configuration control. From this dialog, you can select row spacing and row grouping. The grouping determines whether parent pipelines have child pipelines nested beneath them. You can also filter columns from this dialog or deselect a column to hide it. We'll add the task name column to the table because it is helpful to know which task executed the pipeline. Click Apply to save the changes. You can expand the time window to include older executions. From the calendar, data is available for the last 45 days for regular executions and 15 days for ultra pipelines. Next, let's switch to the view of running pipelines. In this view, the task type and status of the execution are of particular interest. For example, if an execution is stuck in the preparing state for a long time, we might want to stop it. To do that, click the three-dot menu. The options include one to stop the pipeline. We've seen how to filter, sort, and stop pipelines. Let's see how to analyze executions in more details. We'll start with an execution that succeeded. First, we'll search by pipeline name to find the transform and write pipeline. We'll click an execution. The details panel opens. The header contains contextual information such as the snaplex, task name, key execution timestamps, and the execution duration. The snap statistics tab shows the history of each snap, the amount of CPU and memory used, duration, and documents produced. If any of the snaps encountered warnings or errors, we could use these filters to find them quickly. For even richer data, we can hover over each snap. Next, we'll look at the Pipeline Logs tab. The logs are also filterable by severity. The download icon at the top right gives you the choice of downloading them in JSON format or as a runtime dump. The Pipeline Parameters tab lists any parameters defined in the pipeline and shows a value if it was captured. The State Transition tab shows the timestamps for preparation, execution, and completion. Next, let's look at the pipeline details for an execution that failed. In this case, the Errors filter preset shows one execution that failed in the last 24 hours. The first error indicates that the pipeline failed to prepare. In the Snap Statistics tab, the two errors highlight snaps with incorrect configurations. This gives us enough information to work on resolving the issues. In conclusion, Monitor surfaces important information that can help you analyze running and completed pipelines. Thanks for watching.